Hey there, let's animate some text. Today we're going to do what I call the stagger slide in effect. Looks like this. Ah, how wonderful. Let's give a quick run through of how I do it in Webflow, and then we'll do the code in GSAP. All right, so I've got a page. This just defines the layout, min height of 100, viewport heights, and overflow set to hidden, some other junk up here. All right, now we've got our heading. Uh, this is set to viewport width so that it looks fancy and fluid. Nothing else matters except what's here in the settings tab. I have this custom attribute wb-data equals text. You could name this whatever you want, but it'll matter what it names when we access it in the code. The last thing to go over over in pages here in the home settings. I have some code in the inside the head tag here. What I've got is I have custom style tags, which this is used to prevent flashing of unstyled content on load. Let's add a D to that. This code just comes from my personal little Notion database of ultimate Webflow resources. It's called Prevent Flash of Unstyled Content. There's a bunch, but if you search, you'll find it. And all this is doing is, well, let's go to the, back to the Webflow. You put your uh, data attribute here, comma, and then you put the class of character. In this one, we're going to be ex uh, splitting the type into characters. And then if you want to make sure that your clients can actually view and edit the text in editor, you'll need this line of code um, or this snippet as well. And now we're loading three different scripts. The first script here is the GSAP library. I'm getting this script right from here on their install page. Second one is the split type library. I'm getting from Luke PV split type uh, documentation. And he's got the bundle right here. And then the last is a code sandbox file that I have loaded up and we're going to hop into next. It's this stagger slide in .js. Okay, over here in code sandbox, we're going to start by using document.query selector, passing our data attribute there that we specified within the Webflow designer. And that's going to store in a variable called text L. We're also going to define another variable called split text. This is an instance of the split type library. To that, we'll pass the text element and we're going to specify that we just want characters out of that. Now we're going to define our timeline variable, and we get this just by calling gsap.timeline. On the timeline, we want to start with a from animation. That from animation is going to happen on each individual character of our text. So we're going to use split text.chars to get that. And then the next uh, parameter that we pass to the from animation is the things that we want to animate. So the first thing we're going to animate is this auto alpha property, which is essentially opacity, but it's also linked to visibility. So we're going to animate the, the opacity is from zero to one on each individual character. We also want to animate the X position. So we're going to define the X position as 200% from where it originally starts. And it's going to animate to the original spot that we specified in the Webflow designer. Next is going to be stagger. We're going to stagger 0 0.05 seconds for each individual character. So they're all going to stagger one after another. And now we're going to define our easing function of expo.out. We're going to add another from animation on this timeline, although this time, instead of targeting each individual character, we're going to target the text element as a whole. And the things that we're going to animate on the text element as a whole is we're going to animate that auto alpha again from zero. We're going to uh, animate the X position from 15% to the, to the right back to its 0%. And then the duration we're going to specify, we just want it to take pretty much twice as long as the text.length because um, and then we're going to multiply that by the stagger that we have up here. So I'm getting the text element. This is counting the, we get the text content from it and dot length. So depending on how many characters there is, we're going to multiply that by two and then uh, multiply that by the stagger. I just found this was a nice um, a nice parameter to chunk in the, the entire thing at once. The last thing, we're going to define the easing function. And then we're also going to add this comma at the end of our timeline and put in within quotes this less than sign. That's going to make both this from animation and this from animation happen at the same time. So we'll get this nice effect of the letters sliding in individually while the whole thing slides as well. So let's go ahead and save that and rerun it. And we have this nice GSAP stagger slide in effect. Hey, if this helped, please like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. And then also in the description box below, I'll be providing a link to my resource library where you can get the some of the code snippets that I use in this. All right, see you on the next one. Bye.